What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you about isosceles and equilateral triangles, and specifically how we can find the lengths and angles of these if you know just some basic congruent theorems or rules, all right? So first of all, let's start with this uh, isosceles triangle right here, all right? Now remember, an isosceles triangle has two sides that are the exact same length, and then it has a third side that is just a different length, okay? So if we know that these two sides are the exact same length, then that means they are congruent, all right? And again, congruent just means same, all right? So if you know these two sides right here are the same, what does that tell us about the angles? Well, it tells us that the opposite angles are also the same, okay? So this angle would be congruent to this angle, okay? And it also works in reverse. So if I tell you that these two angles down here are congruent, if they're the same, then the opposite sides are also the same. Okay, and it works the same with an equilateral triangle, right? And an equilateral triangle is just a triangle where all the sides are the exact same length and all the angles are the exact same also, okay? So again, all the sides are the same, so all the sides are congruent and all the angles are the same, so all the angles are congruent also. Okay, and what's kind of cool about this triangle is, well, remember, any triangle, doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is, whenever you add up all three angles inside of any triangle, it always adds up to 180 degrees, okay? So if I'm telling you that these three angles are the exact same, in an equilateral triangle, it's always going to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, okay? Because 60 plus 60 plus 60 is equal to 180 degrees, all right? So again, in an equilateral triangle where all the sides and all the angles are the same, the angles are always gonna be the same. It's always gonna be 60, 60, 60, all right? So now that we covered some of these fundamentals, fun, right? Uh, let's go over just a few examples so we can kind of tie it all together. So here it says in exercises 13 through 16, find the values of X and Y, all right? So let's start with 13 right here. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it gives us some congruent sides, right? So it's saying this side, this side, this one up here, this one right there, and this one. All of those sides are congruent, or in other words, they're the same, right? So if you notice something about this middle triangle, this like upside down triangle, all the sides are the exact same. And whenever you have three sides that are the exact same, all the angles are the exact same right? So this is an equilateral triangle. So what do we know about equilateral triangles? Well, all the angles are always 60 degrees, right? So this one, uh, I'll just point to it, where this X is, is 60 degrees. Now, this one up here is 60 degrees, and this one is also 60 degrees, right? So we already found one of our values, right? We found what X is equal to, right? Uh, let's just write it over here. So we know X is equal to 60 degrees, okay? Now, let's try and figure out what y is. So one thing that this problem is also showing us are these little arrows right here, right? This little arrow and this little arrow. Okay, so whenever you see little arrows like that on two different lines, that just tells you that these lines right here, so this line at the top and this line at the bottom, they are parallel, okay? And the reason that's important is because whenever you have two parallel lines, and they're being intersected or crossed by another line. So for example, like this line right here, they create special angles, okay? So we have what's essentially two parallel lines and a transversal, all right? And if none of that sounds familiar, I'll link a video to that in the card above. But the way uh, this one would basically work is, again, we have two parallel lines and a line running through them, which is known as a transversal, okay? So this transversal basically creates special angles with the parallel lines, okay? And in this case, we have alternate interior angles, okay? So this angle right here and this angle right here form a pair of alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are always congruent, okay? So if this angle right here is 60 degrees, that means this angle over here is also 60 degrees. Okay, and it's the same thing with this line right here. Okay, this line basically runs through the parallel lines like that. Okay, so again, alternate interior angles, right? So this angle right here is 60 degrees. So alternate interior, alternate just means opposite side. So on the opposite side of this uh, transversal right here, 
would be on this side, right? So this angle right here is also 60 degrees. Okay, now that we have this angle right here, now this helps us uh, figure out what Y is because as you can see, this triangle right here looks like an isosceles triangle, right? So we know these two sides are the exact same length, but this bottom side, it might be a different length, right? We don't know if it's the same length as these two other ones. So since we can treat it as an isosceles triangle, what do you remember about the rule for isosceles triangles? Well, again, it said if the two sides right here are congruent, then the two opposite angles down here are also congruent, right? Or in other words, the same. So if this one is 60 degrees, that means this one right here, where the Y is, is also 60 degrees, okay? So then we know that Y is also equal to 60 degrees. All right, so hopefully that one wasn't too bad. So let's just do a couple more real quick, and then I think it's gonna start making a little bit more sense. So 15. Okay, so uh, the first thing that kind of sticks out with this one is that I have an equilateral triangle right here, right? Because all my angles are the exact same, right? And when all your angles are the exact same, that means all the sides are the exact same, okay? So if this is four, that means Y over here is also equal to four. And then this side over here is also equal to four, okay? Now, what do you notice about this triangle right here? Well, it's telling us that these two angles right here are congruent, okay? And if two angles right here are congruent, that means the sides are congruent, right? This side and this side are congruent, okay? So the length of this side, again, is equal to four. So the length of this side right here must also be equal to four, okay? So we can set up this little expression and set it equal to four. Uh, to solve for x right here. Okay, so we have x plus 1 is equal to 4, so to solve for x just subtract 1 from both sides, right? So then we're left with x is equal to 4 minus 1, which is 3. Okay, so here x is equal to 3, and then here y is equal to 4. All right, let's try one more right here, 16. All right, so again, the first thing that kind of sticks out to me, just because it's easier to start with, is this equilateral triangle, right? Because and we know it's an equilateral because all the angles are the same. So if all the angles are the same, all the sides must be the same, right? So that means this side, 5y minus 4, is equal to this side over here, 3x minus 5. Okay, and then the other thing that kind of stands out is this isosceles triangle right here, right? So again, it's telling us that these two angles right here, this one and this one, are the same. So if the two angles are the same, that means the two sides are the same, right? So this side and this side must be the same. Okay, so that must mean that this little expression right here, the y plus 12, must be equal to this side over here, the 3x minus 5. Okay, and remember, 5y minus 4 is also equal to 3x minus 5, right? So all these three little expressions are equal to each other, right? So y plus 12 is equal to uh, 5y minus 4, and those are also equal to 3x minus 5, okay? The reason that's important, or the reason that helps us, is that we can solve uh, for y right here because we know that this side, right, the y plus 12, is equal to this side also, the 5y minus 4, right? So that's how you're going to solve for y right here. You're just going to set these two little ones equal to each other since we know that they're equal to each other, right? So we're going to say y plus 12 is equal to 5y minus 4. 5y minus 4, okay? Now, uh, we're just going to try and get all the y's on the same side of this equal sign right here. Okay, so I'm going to subtract y from here. And remember what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other, right? So we'll subtract y from right there also. And then we're going to try and get all the numbers to the other side of the equal sign, right? So this minus 4, I want to move it to the left side over here. So I'm going to add 4 right here. And what you do to one side of an equation, again, you do to the other. Okay, so then simplifying some stuff here, uh, these y's cancel out, and then here we're left with 12 plus 4, which is equal to 16. So we get 16 is equal to uh, 5y minus y, or 1y, which is equal to 4y, All right? So 4y, and then here, uh, minus 4 plus 4, that also just cancels out, right? So then we're just left with 16 is equal to 4y, right? Now to solve for y, we just need to get rid of this 4, and we're going to do that by dividing by 4. And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So then these fours cancel out. So then we're left with y is equal to 
16 divided by 4, which is equal to 4. Okay, so we just figured out what y is equal to, right? y is equal to 4. So if we plug in y into either one of these, let's just plug it into this one right here. If we plug in uh, 4 for y right here, so we would have 5 times 4 minus 4, right? So then 5 times 4, that's equal to 20. So then we get 20 minus 4, and that's equal to 16. Okay, so that means this side right here is equal to uh, 16. That means this side over here is equal to 16. That means this side over here is equal to 16. This side also is equal to 16, okay? And then lastly, we just need to solve for x right here. And to do that, we can just set this little expression equal to what we know the length is now, right, which is 16. So we can say that 3x minus 5 is equal to 16, all right? So then here we're going to add 5. Uh, to both sides. Okay, those cancel out. So then we're left with 3x is equal to 16 plus 5, which is equal to 21, right? So then to get rid of the 3 here, we'll divide both sides by 3, right? Those cancel out. So then we're just left with x is equal to 21 divided by 3, which is equal to 7, right? So then here x is equal to 7.